Hello, uh, Rob Watson here, <coughs> and I'm just experimenting with a, a a new kind of set of vlogs that I want to do. Um, I've created a new YouTube account, or I, actually I've discovered an old account that I've got, um, which I haven't got any videos on, uh, and I'm trying to figure out how to transfer videos across from one account to the other account, and a couple of other accounts I've got, and uh, as ever with kind of YouTube, you go around in circles and it's like it's kind of like really confusing. So I thought what I'd do is just have a kind of post 10 minutes of just trying to explain what I want to do with the account. So it's um, it's kind of I run a web, my websites are decentered uh, media, uh, Leicester Stories, and I've got a kind of personal blog site, uh, Rob Watson Media. Uh, not a very inventive name. Uh, it kind of says it does what it says on the tin. And I kind of use it occasionally and I posted uh, videos and stuff to my uh, YouTube channel, channel that's connected to, but I just want to transfer it over to this new account. And I kind of want to get in the habit uh, of, of posting on a more regular basis and, and just sharing thoughts and observations about things. And uh, uh, so I'm just going to try and uh, uh, do something on an irregular basis uh, and get a bit more confident at it. So I'm not too bad at sitting here and uh, doing stuff to the camera, to when I'm out and about, sitting in cafes um, and kind of using it as a journal as well. So um, as certainly as we're opening up from lockdown, there's going to hopefully be more opportunities to uh, to travel around and to do stuff and to see things. So I kind of want to be getting out about uh, out and about a bit. So you know, I'm not just stuck in. Uh, I'm trying out a uh, clip mic set that I got. It's, I thought it was stereo, but I think it's mono. Uh, I'll have to look at the adapter that you get to go into the uh, the lightning adapter that goes into the iPhone to to figure out if there's, if there's a stereo version. Um, as ever with kind of things that you buy for uh, for Apple stuff, it's not quite as clear and straightforward as with other brands and other other devices. Uh, so uh, at the moment it's mono, um, but I'll try and figure out how to do that as well. <coughs> Excuse me. And then, yeah, really, really kind of just thinking through uh, kind of things that are kind of uh, relevant, and, you know, kind of maybe in the news or or you know, that I've kind of come across and uh, or maybe maybe offloading a bit. Uh, is that a legitimate thing to do? And to kind of just have a bit more uh, fun uh, and to reflect on things that I'm doing and engaging with and thinking about uh, on a more personal level rather than perhaps the stuff that I do on a professional level. Um, and, and the two kind of see, you know, there's, there's no clear boundaries between the two. So uh, you know what I learn here, I'll apply in what I do professionally, and what I do professionally, I'll do my best to apply here as well. Uh, but but there's no guarantees that it'll be any good, uh, and it's a learning experience, and that's you know, one of the main things that I I enjoy. So I, 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 I kind of got myself into a bit. Uh, you know, this <laughs> sitting trying to do these YouTube accounts was very frustrating, and. You know, you have to watch lots of videos to get a little bit of information that's relevant. But there's always a missing piece, and that missing piece means that you can't do complete the job. And then I'm so now I think I'm waiting for some permission emails that I've I've sent uh, uh, to myself to my different accounts to kind of be processed and to get back to me to uh, uh, to give me permission to move things. And it's like and it's things like the difference between a. Uh, videos that you put on your chan on on your uh, uh, chat YouTube account and videos that you put on a channel that you create and host, and uh, it's like oh this is a bit more confusing than I thought it was going to be. So I'm setting up a a channel, um, which will be uh, I did just really basically called it Rob Watson's Vlogs, um, and I hope I've got the apostrophe in the right place and just to. Uh, as I say, just to kind of post some stuff as I'm traveling around. Uh, I've been really fascinated that over the last few days watching YouTube videos uh, from uh, around the world. Uh, and I've only looked at you know, a, a dozen or so of walking, walking, walking tour videos. And they're really fascinating, really interesting because they 
uh, allow you. I've, I've recently purchased a fairly large uh, TV and it comes with YouTube so you can you can uh, view things on it uh, from YouTube and you can use all the access that you've got to YouTube that you've got everywhere else on YouTube and it's great because you can see things it's large <coughs> I'm not just looking at this small screen which I can't see because the daylight is shining in my face you know it's 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 you can sit back on the sofa and you can relax and you can pour yourself a gin and tonic and you can sit and watch somebody walks around Tokyo or Berlin or uh, Paris or London or Liverpool for a couple of hours and they have uh, a microphone that they um, they really just um, what's the word I'm looking for they just they just walk around it's got on a steady cam um, and they don't talk over it or very seldom do they talk over it and there's no music over it and they're really relaxing and I feel as if I've kind of been able to take a bit of a guided tour for places that one started off with you know, a mix of places that I've been and places that I haven't been but I'd like to go um, and in the absence of really kind of being able to get on a plane and do international travel I thought it was quite interesting to be able to see these things from somebody else's perspective and some of them are from before the pan pandemic and some of them are during the pandemic and some are more recent and it it really gives you a kind of an insight into into you know places before you go and visit them and it's fascinating that the technology changes uh from you know looking at youtube as a lean forward experience where you're looking at something on a laptop or a, or, or, a, or a mobile device to something which is a lean back uh, mode of watching and viewing and uh, you know you, it's high definition now, even just two years ago you know the the affordability of large uh, screens were, were they were quite expensive and the broadband capacity for doing high definition video was quite limited but this is really opened it out to something where you can you know and and often the, you know the, the sound quality is pretty good a lot of wind noise on them I've, 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 I've heard so you know, maybe people can use external microphones with uh, with, with, with a, a, a windshield on it but you know they're, they're really good and you know and as I say there's no music there's no talk and there's a couple of times they do it with titles so I've subscribed to some of the channels and I'm not say, suggesting that I'm going to go out and do that um, and, and, and walk around for endlessly for hours and and shoot video um, but it might be something I end up doing because it is it is very relaxing. I remember a few years ago talking to a friend who wanted to capture a walk that he did he used to do in Derbyshire and and kind of you know up and down hills into the valleys across uh, gate posts that kind of thing and he said before when he's in his retirement home and he can't get out and do it any more walk and he'd like to be able to replay the walk and and you know revisualize what it was you know you might not be able to physically go there but you can see it now and and we're in that world we have that technology we have the devices you know the kind of gopro devices or your phones and it's fascinating you know, that you can you 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 can do this and you can uh, easily transfer them now and load them up online and uh, you know it, it's it's more accessible than it ever was it doesn't take hours and hours of processing and rendering it doesn't take uh, too long to upload to a uh, 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 to YouTube itself and other video uh, sharing sites so it, that that's caught my imagination the places I've visited visited virtually visited have been um, Montpellier because I stayed in Montpellier a couple of years ago and it's it's really nice to kind of go oh that's close to where I stayed and yes I had a look around that church and yes I had a coffee in this place and oh is that closed now and yes that's what the mood was like at that time in the morning i did uh, nantes which i stayed in nantes a couple of years ago in in uh, northern northwestern france and um it was like you know uh, you know the, the nostalgia comes out uh, you know the weather's not been great here in the uk we don't get uh, the continental weather which is consistently warm and bright uh, what we get is kind of half a morning of potential sunshine and then it clouds over and the temperatures are always kind of can be depressed and you know we've got low pressure coming in at the moment so it means that the the, the, the weather's okay but it's not brilliant um, whereas on the continent it's kind of consistently for a few, you know, weeks and months that it's, it's bright and summery and but I remember sitting 
uh, one morning writing postcards and um, yeah, drinking coffee and trying and failing miserably to speak French. Uh, <laughs> my language skills are terrible. And, you know, it's just, I, th I think it's, it's a nice way of sharing that experience and looking at the world through, you know, a, uh, a different mindset and a different set of eyes. And one of the observations I'd make is, is I, I, I will be clear about my political alliances with this. Anybody who knows me knows that I am anyway. But, you know, I kind of regard Brexit as a, as a huge calamity, you know, as a kind of a massive strategic error, regardless of what might be considered as the upsides. And there are, there were, there are potentially upsides. Uh, I think overall, the, 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 the thing, the damage that it does to our psyches, if you like, is it isolates us. And I think every person who lives in a small British post-industrial town, like, or large city, uh, should look at how European cities have progressed and what kind of level of investment they've had and what kind of level of just investment in the built environment. So a lot of cities and, uh, you know, kind of France is the, uh, uh, in my mind at the moment, you know, Bordeaux, um, uh, Toulouse, uh, Montpellier, um, uh, uh, I'm trying to think, Nantes has a tram and and they've been had these trams for some time they've been invested in over over the last if not 10 years then 20 years um and and it's seen as part of the integrated nature of the city and the towns but also the kind of built environment in terms of the pavement you know these are these are not is a former industrial city with warehouses and uh, uh engineering workshops as much as it was a, a mercantile city um, and dealt with trade from the North Atlantic and in the same way that Leicester was a engineering town, small light engineering and warehouses and things. But the, the, the European model of redevelopment of, our, of, of urban spaces is 30 years ahead of expectations that we have. So, so a slight inconsequential uh, 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 you know, observation. Uh, I was sitting outside a cafe in Leicester the other day and there was a parking bay and when it became clear there was a van delivering things um, at all times of the day they deliver, they're not restricted to certain hours of the day. But to get into the parking bay, you mount the pavement and then drives into the parking bay and you know that is common practice but in France there are bollards and posts in all of the streets in the town centres that segregate traffic so you if you get a vehicle down you can't stop you would have to stop in the road unload and then move forward what you can't do is just park on the pavement and you know we've got this mindset here of you know just just drive your big so no wonder our pavements get broken and damage so quickly because you, we treat them in a way we don't respect them we don't look after them it's a free-for-all for anybody to come along and park a big HGV on top of them um, and so you know we need to change this and you know if, if, if you've seen the IPCC report the uh, international panel on climate change it says uh, that it's you know it, what is required is systems change whole scale systems change and you know it's a challenge to start to think about how we can reimagine our cities in a way that is that, that where we're stewards of the public realm and not simply seen as being a nuisance you know pedestrians are viewed as being a nuisance um there was a uh, an article in the paper today i think it was cologne um, are, are banning and fining people for noisy cars. So whether it's m music, the boombox kind of cars with loudspeakers in them, or whether it's people who've adapted their exhausts and they sound, you know, really kind of like a an industrial drill or a jet taking off. And and they're being you know kind of challenged by the police and fined, and the cars are going to be confiscated, and it's a trial. But that kind of noise pollution and. You know, it, it, it kind of, you've got to push through all of this here in Leicester uh, because there isn't common agreement that 
the priority is for you know vulnerable people um, and I include you know every person is vulnerable we are vulnerable beings but we're relegated below you know we're, we're behind everything else we're behind the priorities are given to vehicle access first of all to people driving around in circles and loops the priority is then given to buses uh, and then it's given to you know other vehicles and then people and the safety of people it's like no we're, we're expected to stay well clear and out of the way of the vehicles which dominate the space and that not just includes space but it includes sound as well and and pollution so we're, we're kind of you know it's a challenge and I think the um, the new rules for the highway code are going to be very interesting to see what kind of pushback there is against that because the highway code's being changed and we're gonna it's it's no longer all road users are equal but from the autumn when they come into effect it's uh, that though those people or those vehicles that do the most harm carry the burden of mitigating risk um, so pedestrians do the least harm so you have the highest level of priority cyclists do the next least level of harm uh, and so it you know kind of works down to the largest vehicles that are the most uh, that can cause the most harm have the highest emphasis that they have to mitigate the risks that they uh, represent and that they can potentially cause and that you know it'll be interesting to see how that plays out and what people's reaction to it is going to be like because it is a kind of it's a mindset of you know it's going to challenge some people's expectations i want to be able to drive here now and i saw this this morning a, a, a woman drove to a, a nursery a, a town center nursery a childminder type place uh, parked a car outside on double yellow lines got out walked into the nursery uh, came back uh, dropped, uh, dropped her child off came back sat in the car for 15 minutes with the engine running reading some notes that were written on paper and I'm like how do we get through to people to turn your engine off turn your engine off there's no need to have your engine running but there's these little things that accumulate and we kind of need to pay attention to them I'm not as I say I'm not like a this is not big p politics this is civility this is you know kind of common common uh, acceptance that we live in a world together you don't litter you don't make too much noise you don't annoy other people unnecessarily um i'm not saying that we should all walk around in some kind of a you know a a, a, a rarefied uh you know we're not back in the victorian age you know people are allowed to express themselves and encouraged to to to, to be individuals and expressive individuals but not at the expense of other people and not when we can't afford to pick this stuff up so you know there's a cost to this and i think the i've said this elsewhere and on other other occasions that there's two things that we've got to that are really just the basic argument after the pandemic as we recover from the pandemic and that is are we prepared if this is going to happen again and that's a when and not if uh, something similar climate crisis it is happening are we prepared for it clearly not and then the second I, uh, uh, thing is the uh, how do we pay for it well if we're wasting money on you know the harms you know the the, the childhood asthma children have to be treated because of uh, uh, air pollution uh, then that is money that is better spent on something else if we're having to sweep up the litter um, if we're having to police the drunks on a Saturday night if we're having to you know and the list goes on it's not a good investment and it's not good use of our resources so having an educated population that maybe holds back a bit more that is more aware of each other's physical presence if you like and that some people don't like loud music in the street and some people don't like loud cars polluting the atmosphere and some people would like to get cheap bus fare and trams rather than owning a car you know those kind of things then perhaps maybe we'll kind of gear up to having a different kind of politics and more conversational kind of way of interacting with each other that is sustainable and that you know that systems change you know it, it isn't just the big systems that we need to change we need to change ourselves 
and we need to change and adapt our behaviors but we don't want somebody setting the rules for us you know do we want somebody coming in from the outside saying here's what you should do you know here's how you're going to do it and here's the rules and you stick to it and if you don't stick to it you're going to get fined or we've got a big stick to force you to do it we don't want that so how do we encourage people to adopt a sense of response social responsibility civic engagement civility mutual understanding you know uh, patience and I, i'm certainly not saying that's easy and i'm certainly not saying i'm a good practitioner of it but you know it's uh, it's kind of one of those ideas anyway i'm going to try and do these videos uh, uh, occasionally and if you want to get in contact with me you can do uh, it's uh, it's uh, rob w media on instagram and uh, twitter uh, or it's rob at robwatsonmedia.net and the website is robwatsonmedia.net i'm hopefully not going to be party political but you know, that might be called for um you know there's there's, there's things i want to say about that and i think i kind of just need to start to get this off my chest and if nobody nobody else hears it or listens to it then that's fine as well but so uh have fun stay safe um the pandemic's not over yet you know uh be socially distant and get your vaccinations that's the responsible thing to do uh and then you know kind of ignore the guff uh of the 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 weirdos who are you know proclaiming that it's all a conspiracy uh, uh, and that's that bill gates is out to put microchips in your head it's not true uh, but anyway that's a different story as well see you soon <laughs>